Okay, 2.5, the power of a function rule and the chain rule. This is we're looking at two parts. The first one, the power of a function rule, is just an extra rule when it deals with a base, a power that has, doesn't have the base of just simply x, but it has a much more complicated base. For example, if you have a function where you, it is, has a power of another function. So basically a, a function with an exponent in front of it. I, take, I can take the derivative of that by n taking the exponent n, bringing it to the front so that I have n, and then taking the derivative of the inside times the power minus 1. So a simple, a better way to look at this is through an example. Find f prime at x if f at x is equal to 5x squared minus 2x all to, raised to the power of 3. So you need to find the derivative. Well, f prime of x is equal to, now let's look at all of this and where that came from. Let's try that again, slowly f prime of x is equal to 3. Where did that 3 came from? Well, it came from this 3. We brought it down to the front times the derivative times the exponent minus 1. So you have to have the three pieces. So the exponent brought down, the derivative of the inside times the function, the power, with a subtracted 1 as the exponent. Whether you write it the blue way or the red way, it is the same answer. You will get full marks. Let's look at another one. Composite functions, such as f of g of x and fog of x, and g of f at x, and goth x, are functions within functions that require special treatment when determining the derivative. For example, this one, f of g of x, is basically I take an equation and plug it into another equation. That's what this means. These two are equal to each other. This is saying I have a function g, which I plug in the function f every time I see an x in g. Well, golf x is the same as writing this. So this is a composition function. Now, let's say h of x is equal to the composition function f of g of x. The derivative of that composition function is the derivative of f with respect to the function g of x times the derivative of g of x. That is basically the derivative of the outside times the derivative of the inside. All right, let's keep going. The chain rule and Leibniz notation can be written as follows. If y is a function of u and u is a function of x, then dy by dx is equal to the combination dy by du times du by dx, obviously provided that dy by du and du by dx both exist. Note that these are y's. So there's a y here and there's a y here versus these are u's. So very, very important. So the chain rule dy by dx is equal to the derivative of y with respect to u times the derivative of u with respect to x. So let's look at examples of this. In this section, we'll look at it. If y equals 3u cubed, 
minus 2u squared plus u minus 1, where u is equal to 2 root x, you're asked to find dy by dx at x equals 4. How do we do that? I'll take the derivative of y with respect to x. Looking at y, there's no x's in it. But we know through Leibniz that dy dx is equal to dy du times du dx. Well, I can do dy du, which is 9u squared minus 4u plus u, which is 1. And then you take the du by dx, so I need to take the derivative of this, which is x to the negative a half. The reason why is this is x to the half. Bring the half to the front. A half times 2 is 1. So you'll have 1x to the negative a half. That's why we have this. Now, we know, need to know when at the value when x equals 4. Well, when x equals 4, what else do we know? Well, we know what u is going to equal. u is going to equal, well, let's see. The square root of 4 is 2. 2 times 2 is 4. So, therefore, u is also equal to 4. Lucky for us, it worked out this way. Anyways, dy by dx at x equals 4 and u equals 4 is going to equal... 9 times 4 squared minus 4 times 4 plus 1, all times 1 over root 4. As an answer, you will get a value of 129 over 2. That is the answer to example number 1. Let's move on. Example number 2. Given f at x is equal to 3x plus 2, and g at x is equal to x squared plus 5, or minus 5, evaluate the following. So this one is not asking for derivatives. It's asking you to determine what the composition function means. This is saying, find g at 3 first. Plug it in. Once you do that, you can then plug in the answer to that into f. So you're going to plug it into that. So g at 3 is going to equal a value of 4. Find f at g at 3. Well, that's the same as finding f at 4. The reason why it's f at 4 is g at 3 was 4. So we plug it in, now f at 4, and we get 3 times 4 plus 2, which is 14. And that is f at g at 3. Do the same for the next one. This one is saying, f at g at x. So we need f at g at x. f at g at x is f at x squared minus 5. This is g of x, folks. So we're plugging that in. Every time we see an x in f, we're going to plug in x squared minus 5. Well, f at g at x is equal to 3 bracket x squared minus 5 and then plus 2. Expand it out, and you will get an answer of 3x squared minus 15 plus 2, which gives us negative 13. That's all, folks. That's for this. Let's keep moving. Sample number 3. y equals a function, and you're asked to find the derivative. This is where we need to take the power of a function rule. So the derivative is equal to 7 times, so 7 is the exponent, that goes to the front, the base minus 1 multiplied by the derivative, which is 3x squared plus 3. That's all. X to the, example number 4 given f at x is equal to x squared minus 3 all cubed times 4x plus 1 all squared, determine f prime of x means that we have to look at this and write this out as determine the product rule. Use the product rule to find the derivative. So to do that, we take the derivative of the first, which will be 3 times x squared minus 3 squared, times 2x, 
times the second plus the second derivative times the first and then what we'll do for f prime of x it needs to be simplified is you will see that both of these sides have some common factors that we can take out. We can both take out a 2 from here and here. We can take out x squared minus 3 from both two of them from both of these and we can take out a 4x plus 1 from both of these but only one of them so that you have 2x squared minus 3 squared times 4x plus 1 times the leftover. What is the leftover? So you notice it's all crossed out. So what are we left with? We're left with the 3, 3, an x, and a 4x, which is 12x squared. A 3, an x, and a plus 1. So we'll have plus 3x. The next one, we have... 8, sorry, pulled out that 2, so it's going to be 4, bracket, x squared, minus 12. So only these guys get multiplied. Simplify it even further inside the big last bracket, and you get this as the answer. Don't forget that you're always going to look for a common factor that we have to pull up, just like it is here. All right, let's keep going. I took an example from the book, page 106, number 14. Find h prime at 2, given h prime at x is equal to fog x, and f at u is equal to u squared minus 1. g at 2 is equal to 3, and g prime at 2 is equal to negative 1. What does this, all of this mean? We need to find the derivative of h first derivative of h is the derivative of a composition function, which is our composite function, f prime of g of x times g prime at x. What does that mean? Well, folks, we need to plug in the value h prime at 2. Before we do that, though, we need to look at something else we're probably going to need to find out what f prime is. We don't have a lot of things with f. Here we know f prime at u. f prime at u, sorry, we know f at u. We need f prime at u. f prime at u is equal to 2u. So, plugging in, we get h prime at 2 is equal to f prime of g at 2 times g prime at 2. Do we know anything here? Well, we know g at 2 is 3. We know g prime at 2 is negative 1. So let's fill it in. We get f prime at 3 times g times negative 1. So what does f prime at 3 mean? Well, we need to plug in 3 for u. So this 3 gets plugged in with this u and you get f prime at 3 is equal to 2 times 3 times negative 1, which gives us negative 6. All right. Let's go on to the next video. Take care.